beech leaf disease nematode was first detected in Ohio a few years ago and it has moved very rapidly across the country to New England. And we are concerned that within the space of three or four years, we may see uh, most of our beech trees killed by this disease. It wasn't really until 2019 that the cause was finally proven to be a foliar nematode. So that's a nematode. These are tiny microscopic worm-like organisms that actually occupy the leaf. We don't even know where its origin is. A closely related subspecies is found in Japan. Gotcha. Typically, when you have the leaves developing from one bud, they'll either all be infected or none of them. And so the nematode populations were so high in some of the buds in the fall that they killed the bud outright. The nematodes, are they in the dark bandings, the light bandings, well, or is that just a result of them being everywhere? You know, this is the great mystery right now. And so we think that the nematodes are in those banded portions of the leaves, but at this time of year, when you do a standard method to try to extract the nematodes from the leaves, they don't come out. We don't really know how it spreads. Whenever there's a wet event, whether it's humidity, dew, rain, the nematodes will exit the leaves and into the water film on that leaf. And that's when a vector like a bird or a squirrel or an arthropod like a spider mite could pick up a nematode and then fly off. There's so many of them that even if a tiny fraction of them gets on the next beech tree, you've now spread the disease in the end of August or into September, it's just a staggering number of nematodes. Every bit of the surface of the forest is covered with these nematodes. Their reproduction and their emergence from the leaves is probably tied in to the one time of year that they can have uh, their opportunity for dispersal, and that is via animals like blue jays or squirrels that are coming to the beech trees to feed on the beech nuts. And because these nematodes are rather sticky and they will attach themselves and just be hitchhikers on these animals, that gives them the opportunity then for long distance dispersal, let's say with, with blue jays. The rapid increase in severity from year to year here has far exceeded what was reported in Ohio and Ontario. It's shocking. Saplings completely unfoliated. They're not photosynthesizing. They're not producing sugars. How long are those saplings going to be able to last? Are they going to have enough reserves to try again next year? We have to wait and see. If we had a very unusually dry autumn, these nematodes would not be able to emerge from the leaf, move through a film of water, and infect a dormant bud. But unfortunately, in this part of the world, it's almost certain that we're gonna have rain events right at that critical time in their life cycle when they need to be emerging from the leaves to infect the overwintering buds. We are doing the research right now, but this is moving so fast in terms of causing disease and plant mortality that we'll be lucky if we have a treatment that can be approved in time for people to save their trees. What we're seeing this year, which again, completely exceeded our expectations in terms of disease severity and in more places now. It's going to be an interesting thing to find out what happens in these forests where the saplings have really not, they're not doing anything. Initial infection, you'll find one cluster here and there in the lower canopy that show banded leaves. The second year, you'll see everything on the tree showing banded leaves. Third year, a lot of twig death. Fourth year, the tree is gonna be on its way out. I think people really need to see it yeah. to really understand how bad it is. It's not just some leaves that have some banding in them. If it was just that and it never got worse than that, I think we'd all be able to live with it. It's not just that. It is really bad. What's the fate of those trees next year? We've never had anything like this. What happens next year? I don't know. You see a lot of twig death, 
Yeah. You see kind of a tuft of branches that have leaves up at the top. But if you had um, binoculars and you looked at, at those clusters of leaves, you'd find that probably 90% or more of them are heavily infected. In all cases, I think the only way that we can really get out of this bind is for there eventually to be um, resistance, genetic resistance to this particular pest. That's in all likelihood the only way that we'll continue to be able to enjoy beech trees in the, in the landscape.